Hey guys, Ryan here. Wanted to make this quick video to show you how you can create an integration from Go High Level into HubSpot. And a couple of queries as to why you might do this. Um, we work with a lot of organizations in which we're deploying lead management for the sales team. So we're handling a large part of what marketing is doing, but we're also acting as the sales development team. So we're developing leads over time. That's why I make videos on things like lead scoring, etc because we're taking them through funnels, which high level of course is really superior in, you know, we're increasing their awareness and evaluation of a particular product over time. And when they're ready to have a conversation with that organization, they're qualified in. And so then therefore they want to then be reporting on those leads and the possibility of those leads becoming, you know, bottom line revenue through being uh, acquired as a customer. So what I've got here is an example of how I would do this for myself. Uh, we've got a LinkedIn product. And right now I've got a pipeline that I created inside of Go High Level, which has, you know, uh, half a dozen or so stages. Now um, these stages <clears throat> are pretty arbitrary. They don't really mean a lot. They're just different stages of their journey and talking to us about different things. Now, if they're booking in for a consultation, that's when I want to be able to run a sales report out of HubSpot, right? And that's when I want to take action beyond high level. And I want to use something a little bit more sophisticated. I want to use HubSpot because I want to bring in some associations, maybe there's some additional contacts so I can have a, a one to many relationship between the organization and a number of decision makers. Now that's the complexity of some sales organizations, but if you're using mostly with small businesses, of course, you might probably just be dealing with a decision maker and that's why. Go High Level has that one-to-one -one relationship between an organization and a contact rather than a one-to-many, right? And I'm sure that they will improve that over time to make it a one-to-many association. But at the moment, we're not completely replacing HubSpot and that's why we still want to build this integration. So essentially what we want to do here, we want to build something that looks like this, right? Now I'm using Integromat to build this integration. Now we start with a webhook. And then we do some stuff inside of CRM and I will basically, I'm just going to delete this, right? And I will show you how to do it from scratch. Okay. So the first thing we need to do is we need to know that we've got a, um, a state in our pipeline, which we do. And when I drag this person into that stage, I want something to happen now, right now, absolutely nothing happens course uh, but when I do that I want this detail about this person to appear and I'm just going to change the name here to um, Bob's Burgers right the details about this person I want them to drop right in to the free consultation booked stage inside of my HubSpot instance so that's what we're going to do. Let's get cracking. So the first thing we want to do is I'm using Integromat. Of course, you could do this with Zapier. Um, right around the time I started using Integromat, it was like six months later, they changed it to Make. So I know that a lot of people uh, don't like Make. Um, I still have the legacy Integromat, and that's my favorite kind of automation tool to use. So I stick with that. So I need a webhook. So let's do a new one. Uh, I'm just going to call this deal state changed, right? I'm going to blast through this because it does take a long time to do this stuff. So the video doesn't want to go for 30 minutes or so. So I grab the webhook URL, then back over to my automations. And um, I created one earlier, of course. Um, so I didn't have to build it from scratch, but here it is my state changed. So I built the state changing in the pipeline LinkedIn. The stage is booked free consultation. So when anybody some enters into there, I wanted to do something. I add webhook action. That's gonna be called ping Integromat. And I've now got a brand new URL to run that with. Now, to make sure you can test this, uh, you want to allow multiple people to go through it multiple times because their stages could be changing, but we're good to go. So the first thing we probably want to do is just check that it actually runs. So let's test that out, right? So um, let's go back to our opportunities. 
Just drag this guy back to this stage, wait two seconds, and drag him right back here. Integra Map should be listening on that URL. Yes, it has, but it's grabbed all the information. Now, if you have a field that is left blank, like the company name, it will not show up. It only pulls through the data that is available, not all data, including null values. Very, something that's caught me a number of times. Now, um, now what we want to do is we want to check in HubSpot to see if that contact exists or not, right? So the reason I do this is because if the contact already exists, it'll complain at you that the contact already exists. So you need to check to see if it exists. So the first thing we want to do is we want to search for CRM objects. And we're going to search for contacts and we need to select an output and we want to select the contact ID. So let's find that contact ID. I want to filter by the properties. I want to filter by the email address. Let's grab that. Email, email. And we're going to say is equal to, and then we're going to pull the email address from go high level, which just happens to be that email over there. Not to be confused with the user email address, which if you just type in email, is two email addresses. The user that's logged into high level and then the contact email address, which is there. So we want to grab that one. We want to go OK. Now, of course, when we run that, it's going to come back and say, yes, it does exist or no, it doesn't exist. So we're going to put in a router. The router is going to then give us the ability to say, well, it does exist. And the condition is going to be, well, the output was the contact ID. And does that exist? If it exists, it means it already exists. So we're going to go that direction. And if it didn't exist, we're going to go down this direction. That is not exist. Now, for the purpose of this demonstration, I'm assuming that they haven't used HubSpot for marketing automation. So the contact is not going to exist because they've connected their social media paper click, etc. So the assumption is that these are all brand new contacts, but you need to check. So let's do a condition to say, all right, well, the contact ID, typing in the wrong area, contact ID does not exist. Okay, so we want to be going down this path. Here. Now, if the contact doesn't exist, first thing we need to do is go and create that contact. So the contact information is the one that you're going to want. That's the group that it belongs to. Okay. And I don't think I've turned anything else on here. Nope. I don't want deal information. I want contact information. Great, so which company they work for? Let's put in the company name. You could of course leave that blank and run some associations later, but we're just gonna do it based on this. We're gonna grab the email address. Again, make sure we're getting the contact email address. We're gonna get the first name. We're gonna get the last name. <clears throat> awesome so check to see if it exists if it doesn't exist create the contact then create the company right so let's create the company the reason for this if you're not sure is HubSpot is very relational so you're creating a deal but then you're associating it later with a company and a contact um, because there's a lot of relational um, objects that link together by common objects like deals, right? Um, so we're going to create a company. We're going to be creating company information. And of course, I don't have a lot of information other than the company name here. So let's just create that. Bob's Burgers. Great. That's pretty much all I've got. And then what I want to do is I still want to create a new record. This time I'm going to create a deal record. And here's where it gets slightly tricky in that deal information is great. 
you've got you know the deal name which can be you know anything that the customer wanted right which would be something like you know the company name and then maybe followed dash um, you know, a new business or something whatever their naming conventions might be the deal owner right um, you could essentially make this the contact owner the contact that you just created because it'll default to assigning an owner so we can say if we just type in owner we'll get the contact owner from a previous property that we had um, they might go pretty advanced and say hey we do a forecast category and next steps right so the next step is going to be you know free, uh, free consultation consultation and I'm just gonna put in the numbers 833, which is the time that I'm recording this. So you can see that it is not something that I cooked up earlier. It is building it right in front of your face. Um, and then it's looking for the associations. So with the associations, um, we're going to have to go and find the values. Um, so I'm gonna want the contact ID of the contact I created in step four. It's going to be that one and then the the company that I created in step five is right there cool now this will work as is but what you want it to do is you want it to magically appear in this pipeline and I've got two pipelines, I've got Core and LinkedIn, and I want it to appear in this stage because we're beyond these early pay, uh, early stages. We're actually at this stage. Now, <clears throat> um, to find that information out, you actually need the internal IDs. So if you go to your settings and we go to our pipelines, very easy, choose the pipeline you want to grab, click on this little code button, and this is the internal ID that we're going to use. So I also need to bring in deal activity as the property group that those two fields belong to. So deal pipeline, that's the ID. And then scrolling back up, the deal stage is going to be again an internal ID and we're going to say the free consultation was booked under this ID click copy or whatever and grab that one there and you know whatever 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 great now I'm not really too concerned with what happens beyond this because I'm not expecting to hit it um, but essentially I'm going to say, okay, well, if it does exist, you can just go and create the deal and do whatever you want to do, right? Um, but the purpose of this demonstration was to show you what's going to happen through this path. So I'm going to click run. And we're just going to move that out the way. We're then going to, because we've run this multiple times already, we're just going to go and change the name of this person to an email that is unique click on update cool so let's just drag him out of that state <clears throat> and back in now we should see oh I didn't click go all right the first thing we want to do is click go so we're listening for that webhook to be pinged with the data. Drag it back in over here. And there it goes. Now it hasn't found this. So what did I do? If the contact ID exists, and if it doesn't exist, and we weren't getting a result for either contact ID does not exist make sure I'm looking at the right one oh 
Okay, so when I updated the email address, I didn't actually click save. So let's run it again and make sure I've got an email address that I haven't used inside of HubSpot before, plus 14, I believe I've never used that one before. I'm gonna listen for new. Oh, it was picking up an old one, there we go. I'm gonna listen for new. I'm gonna go back to our opportunities. We're gonna drag it in the right state. I'm gonna go over and see what happens. And off it goes. Cool, this is all green lights. So it's created that and creates the, <clears throat> the contact, the uh, company record, then the deal record, all because it didn't exist. And then the moment of truth is if we go back to our sales pipeline inside of HubSpot, um, I can see Bob's Burgers was created for me right there. Now it has duplicated just because it did it previously on a different record, but you can see this is just how easy it is to integrate, go high level with. So there we go, free consultation, LinkedIn. Now you can populate all of this information if you want. Now I've gone a few over the, a few extra steps further here. You can um, create meetings. So if the uh, inside of GHL you've booked a meeting, you can bring in the details of that meeting. If you're adding a BCC email address to all of the correspondence, you can bring in all of the related emails. And of course, all of the notes that you create in a contact record can be pulled through for the notes. That is an advanced session because there's a lot of checking to see if things exist and back and forth and back and forth. But what was that? Probably about 10 minutes and we've got integration from Go High Level uh, right into HubSpot and off we go. Um, hope this video was helpful. If you've got any questions, please leave them in the comments. Otherwise, please like and subscribe. It'll help me get recommended. This has been Ryan. Thanks very much for coming. Cheers. Bye.